Hey, there you are. What are you up to? Well, I was just looking at this tree just off the path. It looks like it's mostly dead, I think. Oh yeah, seems like a snag. That's a tree that's on its way out, but still standing. Don't they want to get rid of it? What? No, snags are super important to keep around, especially if they're not likely to hurt anyone when they eventually do come down. Snags are a place to live or take shelter for tons of wildlife, a source of food for bugs, plants, and lichen, and anything that eats them, a perch for birds, and a great way to make sure nutrients that were in the tree make their way back into the soil. On top of that, I don't think this tree is completely dead. In fact, it looks like it's mostly just the top that's dead wood. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I wish there was an easy way to tell how much of the tree is still alive. But it's an irregular shape. In geometry, an irregular shape is a shape that has side lengths and interior angle measurements that are different. Actually, I think you're onto something. Let's try to figure out what strategy can we use to estimate the area of an irregular shape like this snag and its deadwood. Here's what we learned. One way we can calculate the area of an irregular shape is by using squares, which are easier to make sense of. Area is then measured in square units. Right, a group of squares to be specific. If you were to imagine the whole tree as just being made up of three squares stacked on top of each other, it's really only the top square that has any dead wood on it. So that's one out of three squares, one third. There's still a lot of living portion in that upper square, and there's a lot of space in all three squares that doesn't actually contain any tree, living or dead. I guess three squares isn't enough, huh? Well, we can just use more. The higher the number of squares we use to approximate the irregular area of a tree, the more accurate our end result is. Let's go for 100 squares. Not too coarse that we won't have good results and not too fine that we'll be stuck here all day counting. <laughs> that works for me. Here, I have a photo of the snag that the Nature Center took to make this easier. We'll look at one side of the tree for now, but that should be good enough for what we're doing. Now let's get those squares on there, 100, all equally sized. Perfect. Now let's shade in all the ones that covered a dead portion of the snag. We can keep looking at the real deal in front of us for reference. Not bad at all. I bet this snag will be going strong for a while yet. I bet all the critters using it will be grateful. Me too. Let's see what other trees we can use this technique on, living or snag. Works for me. You do the drawing this time, though. That was a lot of shading. Deal. <laughs>